Hey people, so I'm underneath a 2016 Ford Everest um, and we're just looking at this tail shaft here. These are a little bit of a different setup to the Rangers. Um, now this particular one has a Ratley CV joint up in here. Um, Ford will only sell you the whole assembly, but uh, look, we know that that's not the case and we can just replace this joint here in the end. So the first thing is I just want to undo these eight bolts. Um, they've got a nine millimeter head on them. Hopefully with these bolts removed, I've got enough room just to kind of move this joint up here and just clear this uh, flange here so I don't have to remove the other end. So the bolts when they come out they look a little bit crusty there, we'll clean those up and we'll be able to reuse those. Okay so we're to the very last one now, just loosen it off completely. With all those bolts out, um, the joint should be able to move out of here, but obviously it's been sitting in there for a while, so it's going to need a little bit of a tap. With this joint now free, I can feel and hear the looseness. Um, it has quite a rattle to it. So that was the noise that we were hearing. Just want to get this metal locking band off um, so that this boot can then be slid off. And there's also a circlip in here that we need to move, but um, we're going to have to cut this or destroy this to get it off. We don't reuse them. Now this probably would have been easier when the drive shaft was still in, in its spot, um, but I'm just literally going to grab it and twist it and just break it. Once you've broken that band off, um, you can just get it out of the way. Now the rubber boot can slide off that easy. We need to have a look in a, on this end here. And see if we can pop this cover plate out. And uh, that's not a good sign what we're seeing here, that that's all broken. But um, hey, it was a broken joint, so I guess we're expecting something broken. Now looking in the end here, there'll be a circlip on the end of this shaft. Um, we just need to remove that circlip. Just pull that circlip away. Now hopefully we have enough room to slide this joint off the shaft. We've just got the rubber boot that's hanging on tight. Now running into a bit of a clearance problem, but let's see if we can get around this. And that's now out. So let's have a little look at what we've got here. Um, that was the circlet that held it onto the shaft. That was a cover that sat over there. For whatever reason, this cover had broken split who knows how that had happened. Um, haven't seen that before, but... And looking inside here, that grease has now just turned hard. Um, and obviously we just cause these balls in here to wear badly um, and cause all sorts of noise. So throw that one away. I've um, got a new one here. Got a few parts in the box. So a couple of little seals, um, a new band to tie it on, new circlip, and obviously the new joint itself. Um, and we're obviously going to have to fill this up with grease. So just looking at how this is going to go together and use my other one as a bit of a guide. So we can see there's quite a sort of an indented part there. So that goes up against the transmission. We'll have a seal in here. The cover plate that sits over there. 
a band that'll tighten that down, the circlet that'll go over it, and then the cover plate. What I might actually do, because I didn't have a lot of space, I'm actually put these things on separately, um, just so I can kind of squeeze them all in. Before we can put it back together, I just need to clean this one up. There's a lot of sort of dried grease in here, so we'll um, spend a few minutes and clean that up. Okay, I'm just using some CV joint grease here. Um, I like to get a little bit in on each ball bearing. I don't want to put too much in just yet because it just becomes a real pain to work with. Um, but I do want to make sure that there's a good drop on each ball bearing in there. And we'll just kind of work it in as best we can. Just on the inner race there and on that outer race. Um, look, once the car starts running and this starts turning, grease is actually going to just going to go everywhere. But um, if we can get it in the right spot to start, that's great. So now I've got that ready to go. I'm also just going to put a little film of grease on this rubber piece here. That'll just help me slide that on over the shaft. The other thing is we have a couple of um, gaskets here. So I usually like just to put a little, little bit of grease down here as a like as a little bit of glue just to kind of help hold this um, gasket in place um, it most likely will move out of the way and we'll have to line it back up again but um, we'll start with it sitting there like that so let's put these bits on the car so I'm just going to put this on first um, now the reason I'm putting this on um, kind of unassembled is just because there's not much room here if I had the drive shaft completely out um, I could just put it all together and it'd be much easier but um, we work with what we got. I'm just going to put that locking band on and we'll just slide the rubber boot on. Next thing is I need to slide this joint in on this these splines. Um, just make sure you got it around the right way so it's the flat face here that ends up going up against here. Um, so I'm just going to put a little bit more grease in here before I put it on. Um, there's no need to grease all this outside because that's just where the seal is going to be sitting anyway. Now once that's lined up on the splines, you should be able to just wiggle it on. Um, if it doesn't wiggle on nicely, it may just need a few taps. This shouldn't be forced on in any way. Um, so if you're having to hit this fairly hard to get it on, something's wrong. Um, but it should just need a couple of little light taps. And that's now on all the way. And we can just feel that that groove is now there for our circlet. Now we can try and get this circlip in place. I just want to go around and make sure that that's fully in place. Um, it's, even with a little bit of grease that I've got, it's super hard to see, but um, spend a moment and make sure that circlip is fully in. And um, we don't want that coming out. Now that circlip's there, I'm going to put a bit more grease into this. Now it doesn't need to be completely filled, um, but you do want a good generous amount in here. Uh, and it gets a bit messy. Again, we don't need grease in all this section around here, um, just in that middle section. So now we've got this next gasket and this little cover plate. So again, I'm just gonna use some grease to kind of hold the gasket in place. Sits up in here. It's just a matter of lining it all up. I'm also now just gonna grab two of the bolts 
um, and just stick them through just so we can have everything lined up. Just be careful again with this gasket on this front face. Make sure it's still in its right spot. So with just two bolts just sitting through, it's just gonna make it easier to line things up. Now that cover plate is kind of hard to fit on. Um, so just get a couple of bolts through and then I'm gonna give it a light tap. Again, just a little tap. Just so that cover plate sits down. Now just I've, with these two bolts that I've got running through, um, I just wanna sit this up into the right spot. Now, we obviously don't have any particular marks to mark this up, so um, however it lines up is gonna be fine. Now I'm not tightening this up for good, I just want just to run these bolts in, um, making sure that I'm not crossing up any threads or anything like that. Now that I know that it's fairly well lined up, I'll just zip this back out. Now I didn't say it before, but it's very important that these holes where the bolts go through, you don't want to get a whole lot of grease through there because um, I'm about to put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts. Um, and if I push them through and they're full of grease, well, the Loctite's not gonna be um, that effective. So a little drop of Loctite on each of these and we'll start putting these bolts back in. You shouldn't have to be forcing these in. If you do, you probably don't have this joint um, in at the correct angle. Just might need to wiggle things around a little bit. So you can see these bolts are quite long. They did have a lot to go through. Um, make sure that everything is going in evenly. Um, I've just done these finger tight and um, I'm now just going to start tightening them up just, just ever so lightly, but sort of keep going opposite just so that this joint pulls in um, and pulls together evenly. Okay, the battery went flat on the camera and I've missed some steps here, but let me just catch you up. Put all the bolts in, we've tightened them down evenly to pull this into the flange evenly, and we've done up the strap here for this boot. I don't have the torque specs for these, um, so I've just used a bit of common sense. Okay, any comments, questions, make sure you leave them below. I'll put the part number for this in the description as well. And uh, thanks for watching.